Hello everyone, grace and peace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, we have Mr. Evolution coming out with another video, Christianity, Hell vs. Heaven. Woo! Let's see. Hello ladies and gentlemen. Hi Brett. This is Brett Keen, and uh, you may notice a difference in my graphics now. I, uh, there was a new update for my webcam, so I'm trying it out. I haven't fully adjusted all the switches the way I like it, but figured I'd record and do it tough. While I'm doing that, though, why don't we discuss the topic? You know, um, I go to BibleCrosswalk.com because they have, like, several different translations of the Bible. Yes, it is a religious website. It is not an atheist website, but they have many translations of the Bible. But what I find interesting is if you type in murder, kill, or rape, it comes up all over. You see, you type in one word that you know may be in the Bible, or guess it's in the Bible, and it tells you how many times it can be found in all the different translations of the Bible. So if you type in kill, murder, or rape, or any of this shit, or sex in the Bible, and stuff like that, or fornication, whatever, it'll tell you, you know, one billion times or whatever the deal is. The same with, um, but what's really weird, ladies and gentlemen, if you type in love, kindness, and mercy, it comes up very few times in the Bible. Not really a shocker, though, is it, for those of us out there who've actually read the Bible and like the Christians out there. Yeah, ha, ha, ha. Okay, so one story that mirrors its way throughout the scripture and, and is echoed is the retelling of Cain and Abel. And Cain killing Abel. Now the Bible specifically says that that was something wrong that he did. Jude continues and talks about that and, and how not to be, you know, evil and mean like a murderer like how Cain was and having the spirit of the Antichrist and so forth. And so just because it talks about it, it doesn't mean that it approves of it in any way or another. Um, it's showing it in the context that it's wrong. And so we need to completely, as humans, be kept hounding, hounded down by God to tell us what is wrong. Because very often we do what is right and needed and need to be rewarded for it. Especially in the times that the scripture was written. Uh, this was in a very, very barbaric time of history uh, where... All nations were fighting each other and tribes were having these faction wars against one another. And so it mentions it, but it doesn't mean that it approves of it that we're to go out and kill and murder. Um, the scripture is quite clear in Corinthians that neither murderers, nor slanders, nor idolaters, nor, nor the sexually immoral, uh, and it gives a whole list of them, will they will not enter the kingdom of heaven. too is that if uh, excuse me on the belch thing folks i just got done drinking some soda but if you type in the search engines and you type in on youtube heaven you'll get about from what i last looked and show is about two hundred and eighty thousand two hundred and eighty thousand videos about heaven and uh you type in hell and there's triple the amount Now, I understand why Christians use the concept of hell in order to try to sell their religion. I really do, because it's easier to scare people and uh, put fear into people's mind. It's easier to scare a child or someone who is weak-minded into a religion. Well, anybody who scares a child with hellfire um, really is of the spirit of the Antichrist. We see that... Christ taught that unless you be innocent like a little child, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Uh, and we find that throughout the scripture that contrary to what some people actually preach, and I've heard this from a pulpit, is that Christ talked more about hell than heaven. Well, I actually checked up on that, and that is in fact a lie, that he spoke more about heaven than hell. And because Christians uh, mention, you know, hell... 
or talk about it um, as a warning to ungodly people, it doesn't mean that somehow they're immoral in some way or another uh, because we need to consider that YouTube is really um, speaking out to predominantly atheist community. And so therefore, if they're um, speaking about hell and warning people about hell and the punishment that God will righteously give them because their own judgment is false as a warning, uh, I, I don't see any problem with this, that this is not in fact immoral. Um, however, exposing this kind of fear to children uh, really is uh, nothing a Christian should be doing. And even if you notice that those who are really serious about their faith, they don't threaten people with hellfire. They don't say, you know, you got to believe the Bible or burn in hell or anything like that. They will actually articulate answers and go and do the research and get back to your questions. You will find that it's the usually the baby Christians that are the ones who will say, you know, burn in hell if you don't accept this because they don't know how to answer. And they haven't been properly equipped by the church in how to answer skeptics' objections on and where to go in the scriptures to find the answers. And so it's usually the the baby Christians who do that um, more often than not. And like you'll see with Jesus Freak and Veritas48 and myself and uh, many other Christian YouTube users who do apologetic research that they don't go and threaten people with that because they realize that that's not... Uh, a Christ-like behavior. But it's hard, I guess, to sell a product just by stating on its merit that it's good. And I've always found it unusual when having conversations with Christians that if you ask them, what's so wonderful about heaven, what's so great about it, and they'll tell me, this is the most I've heard about it. Pearly gates, golden roads, mansions and stuff that Jesus made. I never really understood that anyway, because if my body is in the ground, and I'm actually some kind of force of energy or some kind of angel with wings that can fly anywhere I want around the universe, why the fuck would I care about a mansion? Okay, this is where Christianity really splits away from the scripture, that this is actually... Um, uh, uh, who am I thinking of? Uh, Plato philosophy that entered the church. Um, believe it or not, but a lot of Christianity became plagued with Plato teaching that, that the earth is evil, heaven is good, body is evil, spirit is good, um, and so forth. And so, according to the Bible, we are all in the grave until judgment day and then we will be raised up to life and god will speak to the ocean and call those who are dead in the ocean to come forth and get the ocean to bring out those who died in her and um likewise the the buried in the earth and we have an emergent uh, uh, um an explosion of the kingdom of heaven here on earth the bible says that the meek will inherit the earth that the that um, in the new heaven and the new earth created by God, that that we will rule as kings and priests um, over it. And so the whole idea that, you know, when you die, you go right to heaven and blah, blah, blah. There's a few people in scripture where they were directly ascended into heaven, um, Enoch and Elijah. And also um, we have Moses too. And... Um, the people that uh, rose with the retro effect from Christ's death on the cross that is mentioned in Mark's gospel. And so they also were uh, had risen and um, became uh, the glorified body as Christ was. And so therefore, in the christian worldview is that it will be the inauguration of heaven here on earth and we will rule with christ and we will rule in the earth and isaiah talks about that i believe it's isaiah 63 or it might be 67 one no uh yeah i think it's 63 and um 
Revelation talks a lot about that, the new heaven and the new earth. And um, Christ, again, mentions that. And what he does is he uses comparison and analogy. The kingdom of heaven is like a man, you know, planting seeds. Or the kingdom of heaven is like um, somebody who comes across a field and finds precious gold and gem buried in it. And he goes and sells all that he has to inherit the field and therefore inherit what is on that property rather than stealing it. And so he gives all these different analogies of what the kingdom of heaven is like and I'm out of time.